Breaking news from around your world on this Friday, July 19th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. A moderate earthquake hit Friday near the Greek capital of Athens, causing residents to run into the streets in fear and firefighters to check for people trapped in elevators. The Athens Institute of Geodynamics gave the earthquake a preliminary magnitude of 5.1, but the U.S. Geological Survey gave it a preliminary magnitude of 5.3. The Athens Institute says the shallow quake struck mid-afternoon about 14 miles north of Athens and was felt across the nation. Authorities inspected areas close to the epicenter by helicopter and police patrol, but no deaths or serious injuries were reported. A government spokesman said that one abandoned building had collapsed in a western district of Athens and that several other abandoned buildings had sustained serious damage in other parts of the city. The quake sparked limited power cuts and communication problems around Athens, as well as people being trapped in elevators. The most powerful quake to hit the Greek capital in the last 20 years came in 1999, when a magnitude 6 quake caused extensive damage and killed more than 140 people. Earthquakes are common in Greece and neighboring Turkey. Two people were killed and another 12 are missing after a huge explosion rocked a gas plant in central China Friday. According to state broadcaster CCTV, 18 people were seriously injured in the late afternoon blast. The explosion occurred in the air separation unit of a coal gas factory in Yima. Officials said the explosion did not occur in the gas tank areas and all production has been stopped. State media said the explosion injured many others and shattered windows and doors of buildings in a three-kilometer radius. Deadly industrial accidents are common in China, where safety regulations are poorly enforced. In March, an explosion at a chemical plant in eastern Jiangsu province killed 78 people and injured hundreds more, blowing out windows of nearby residential buildings. In 2015, China suffered one of its worst industrial accidents when giant chemical blasts in the northern port city of Tianjin killed at least 165 people. A heat wave that enveloped the Midwestern U.S. and south-central Canada has pushed into southeastern Canada and the northeastern U.S. Friday, ushering in temperatures that could top 100 degrees Fahrenheit in some cities and may force utilities to take steps to prevent power outages. The huge mass of warm air is likely to affect the region through Sunday with little overnight relief. Meteorologist Dave Roth of the National Weather Service said there are 124 million people under a heat advisory or excessive heat warning. That's a third of the population. As of Friday, the heat wave sprawled from Kansas to the Atlantic coast and from South Carolina north to Maine. It was expected to intensify over the weekend. Temperatures on Friday were forecast to reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit in Washington, 97 in Philadelphia, and 91 degrees in New York, where it would feel more like 110 degrees when you factor in high humidity. A U.S. Navy vessel shot down an Iranian drone that threatened the vessel in the Strait of Hormuz, a key shipping route for oil exports from the Persian Gulf region. President Donald Trump said the drone flew within a 1,000 yards of the amphibious assault ship USS Boxer and ignored multiple calls to stand down before it was destroyed. Trump said this is the latest of many provocative and hostile actions by Iran against vessels operating in international waters. The United States reserves the right to defend our personnel, facilities, and interests. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif said Tehran had no information about losing a drone. The news came a day after Iran reportedly seized a foreign oil tanker near the Strait of Hormuz. Meanwhile, Iranian Foreign Minister Zarif said Iran will accept enhanced inspections of its nuclear program in return for the lifting of U.S. sanctions. At the Iranian mission to the United Nations in New York, Zarif told reporters, It's not about photo ops. We are interested in substance. There are other substantial moves that can be made. The United States has been tightening sanctions on Iran since last May, when President Trump pulled out of the 2015 landmark multination nuclear accord aimed at preventing Iran from gaining a nuclear weapon. 
In early July, Iran announced that it had surpassed a uranium stockpile limit set out by that accord, and on Thursday, the United States slapped sanctions on seven companies and five individuals accused of helping Tehran procure sensitive material for nuclear centrifuges. The offer is expected to be rejected by the Trump administration. As Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said that sanctions will only be lifted once Iran gives up its nuclear ambitions. Zarif said if the Trump administration puts their money where their mouth is, they would agree to the deal. Kosovo's Prime Minister Ramush Haradinaj said on Friday he was resigning because he had been called to a war crimes court in The Hague to answer questions from prosecutors related to Kosovo's violent independence struggle. The specialist chamber was set up in 2015 to try ex-Kosovo Liberation Army guerrillas for alleged atrocities in the war of 1998 through 1999 that led to the independence from Serbia. This is the second time Haradinaj had to resign as prime minister. In 2005, he was indicted by the United Nations War Crimes Tribunal for former Yugoslavia. He was tried and acquitted twice by that court. Kosovo President Hashim Thasi will now have to consult with political parties on forming another government or holding snap elections. Haradinaj, a former guerrilla commander, has always denied wrongdoing and said he is ready to face any accusations. He said the country should now have early elections. The four-month grounding of Boeing's 737 MAX aircraft fleet has put a near $5 billion dent in the aviation giant's second quarter earnings. Boeing said Thursday it has taken a $4.9 billion after-tax accounting charge which contributed to an overall revenue loss of $3.6 billion. Boeing said the charge will cut its quarterly revenue and pre-tax profits by $5.6 billion. The company will release its official earnings report next week. The hefty charge was a major factor in what will be Boeing's first quarterly loss in a decade and its largest in history. Some analysts had projected a $1.3 billion profit for Boeing in the second quarter. Boeing said it's working with federal regulators to return the 737 MAX to service. Boeing said finalizing a software fix to return the MAX 8 and MAX 9 to service may not happen until September. After that, regulators must approve the fix before the planes can return to service. Southwest Airlines on Thursday joined a growing list of airlines extending their grounding of Boeing 737 MAX aircraft through early November. President Trump announced Thursday that he plans to nominate Gene Scalia as Secretary of Labor. The son of late conservative Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia served as a top lawyer in former President George W. Bush's administration and is now in private practice in Washington, D.C. Trump said Eugene Scalia has led a life of great success in the legal and labor field and is highly respected. If confirmed, Scalia will replace outgoing Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta. Democrats are expected to oppose the nomination because of Scalia's record representing Walmart and other companies that have battled unions and pushed for easing labor laws. Toys R Us new owner True Kids Brands announced Thursday that the iconic toy store was starting a comeback in the United States with two stores. The chain collapsed and closed all 700 of its U.S. stores more than a year ago. The new stores will be smaller than old Toys R Us outlets and will offer a highly engaging retail experience designed for kids, families, and to better fit within today's retail environment. True Kids said the new stores, which will open in Houston and Paramus, New Jersey, before the holiday shopping season, will sell fewer toys than the old stores did. True Kids, which bought the Toys R Us brand last October, says it will open more stores in prime high-traffic retail markets next year. Toys R Us still has 900 stores overseas in Europe, Asia, and India. And that's your update for this Friday, July 19th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend.